Just imagine in this square mile how many people were burned for reading the Bible in English. And one of the principal burners and torturers of those who tried to read the Bible in English here in London was Thomas More. You may know if you've read the novel Wolf Hall, which won the Man Booker Prize just the other day. Now, that's a long time ago. It's not relevant, except that it was only last century that Thomas More was made a saint, and it was only in the year 2000 that the last pope, the Pole, he, he made Thomas More the patron saint of politicians. This is a man who put people on the rack for daring to own a Bible in English. He tortured them for owning a Bible in their own language. The idea that the Catholic Church exists to disseminate the word of the Lord is nonsense. It is the only owner of the truth for the billions that it likes to boast about. Because those billions are uneducated and poor, as again it likes to boast about. But they are the ones it can tell and bully and domineer. And then we come to children. Well, it's all very well to say the world didn't know better. The world had no knowledge of how dangerous crime uh, how dangerous a crime child abuse was. I want to read you some of the words of Ratzinger, the current Pope. Staggers me to admit that he is the head of state of a country. Incidentally, Anne Whittingham said, we didn't have the power of a nation state. Yes, you do. You are a nation state. Yes, I wrote it down. You mentioned that. You are a nation state. And it is no accident that the Cairo the UN Cairo Population Conference, when they were trying to do something about the world's population spinning out of control, Vatican City, as a nation state represented at that conference, made a joint statement with the Islamic countries of the world, notably the most extreme Islamic countries of the world, led by Saudi Arabia, and it, it began, on behalf of the revealed religions of the world, dot, 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 and what it did was essentially hobble and veto any possibility of women's sexual freedom in the world because as we know the Islamic religion and the Catholic Church have never been anything other than implacably opposed to women's choice in their own bodies and their destinies. <laughs> However, so Ratzinger in 2003 was, he was he was prefect, I, I'm not making this up, he was prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. And it was his job to deal with the child abuse scandal that was brewing. His first act was to write a letter to Catholic bishops ordering them on pain of excommunication not to talk to the police or anyone else. Investigations should be handled, he wrote, and I'm quoting that letter, in the most secretive way restrained by perpetual silence. The Mexican founder of the Legion of Christ movement, Maciel de Goyado, was protected from his own catalogue of child abuse, which is horrific. One cannot put on trial so close a friend of the Pope, said Ratzinger. When the allegations could no longer be denied, Maciel was sentenced, <laughs> sentenced to a life of prayer and penitence. And Ratzinger described the whole affair and that of Bernard Law of Boston, to which my colleague also referred, uh, as causing suffering for the church and for me personally. He also said the answer would be to stop homosexuals from being allowed into the church. Now, it's perhaps unfair of me as a gay man to moan at this enormous institution, which is the largest and most powerful church on earth, has over a billion, as they like to tell us, members, each one of whom is uh, under uh, strict instructions to believe the dogmas of the church, but may wrestle with them personally, of course. It's a little hard for me to know that I am disordered, or again, to quote Ratzinger, um, that I am guilty of a moral evil, uh, simply by fulfilling my sexual destiny as I see it. It's, it's hard for me to be told that, to be told that I'm evil, because I think of myself as someone who is filled with love, whose only purpose in life was to achieve love, 
and who feels love for so much of nature and the world and for everything else, and who, like anybody decent and of an education, realizes that in order to achieve and, and receive love, it's a struggle. It's not one that needs a pope to tell you how to do it. It certainly isn't one who needs a pope to tell you that you're evil. With 6% of all teenage suicides being gay teenage suicides, we certainly don't need the stigmatization, the victimization that leads to the playground bullying when people say you're a disordered, morally evil individual. That's not nice. It isn't nice. The kind of cruelty in Catholic education, the kind of child, let's not call it child abuse, it was child rape. The kind of child rape that went on systematically for so long. Let's imagine that we can overlook this and say it is nothing whatever to do with the structure and nature of the Catholic Church and the twisted, neurotic and hysterical way that its leaders are chosen. The celibacy, the nuns, the monks, the priesthood. This is not natural and normal, ladies and gentlemen, in 2009. It really isn't. I'm sorry. For me to be called a pervert by these extraordinarily sexually dysfunctional people, I don't think human history has ever had more. I have, to, I have to say, this is not a problem that necessarily is permanent. I like to believe that in 10 years' time I could come back and argue the opposite. Even though I've talked about the history and the structural problems of this benighted institution, and the cruelty and the unpleasantness it has caused around the world, I have yet to approach one of the subjects dearest to my heart. I've made three documentary films on the subject of AIDS in Africa. My particular love is the country of Uganda. It's one of the countries I love most in the world. Been there many times. I've interviewed Joseph uh, Teguerwari Museveni and his wife Janet uh, before, unfortunately. She suddenly saw God. Um, there was a period when Uganda had the worst incidence of HIV AIDS in the world. I went to Rakai, the village where it was first spotted. But through an amazing initiative called ABC, abstinence, be faithful, correct use of condoms. Those three, I am not denying that abstinence is a very good way of not getting AIDS. It really is, it works. It, so does being faithful, but so do condoms. And do not deny it. And this Pope, this Pope, not satisfied, not satisfied with saying, condoms are against our religion, please consider First, abstinence. Second, being faithful to your partner. He spreads the lie that condoms actually increase the incidence of AIDS. He actually makes sure that aid is conditional on saying no to condoms. I have been to, there's a hospital in Bawindi in the west of Uganda where I do quite a lot of work. It is unbelievable, the pain and suffering you see. Now, yes, yes it is true, abstinence will stop it. It's, it's the strange thing about this church. It is obsessed with sex, absolutely obsessed. Now they will say, they will say we with our permissive society and our rude jokes are obsessed. No, we have a healthy attitude. We like it, it's fun, it's jolly. Because it's a primary impulse, it can be dangerous and dark and difficult. It's a bit like food in that respect, only even more exciting. The only people who are obsessed with food are anorexics, and the morbidly obese. And that, in erotic terms, is the Catholic Church in a nutshell. So, all I want to say, really, is that we're here in the Methodist Hall. I'm not trying to argue against religion on this occasion. I'm not saying there's any... I understand the desire of anybody to, to seek spiritual rewards in a, in a complex and difficult to understand world. We don't know why we're here, where we're going. We want answers. We love the idea of answers. How marvelous it would be. But there are other choices. There are Quakers. Who could possibly quarrel with a Quaker? With their pacifism, with their openness, 
with their ease, with their simplicity, with their refusal to tell anybody what's a dogma and what isn't, even with Methodists also. I'm not saying Protestantism is the answer against Catholicism. I am merely saying there are all kinds of ways we can search for the truth. You do not need this imperial panoply of marble and gold. Do you know who would be the last person ever to be accepted as a prince of the church? The Galilean carpenter, that Jew. They would kick him out before he tried to cross the threshold. He would be so ill at ease in the church. That simple and remarkable man, if he said the things that he was said to have said, what would he think? What would he think of St. Peter's? What would he think of the wealth and the power and the self-justification and the wheedling apologies? <laughs> what would he think of a man who calls himself the father, a celibate who dared to lecture people on what family values are? What would he think of any of that? He would be horrified. But there is a solution. There is an answer. There is redemption available for all of us and any one of us. And for the Catholic Church, funnily enough, I think it's a novel by Morris West. The Pope could decide that all this power, all this wealth, this hierarchy of princes and bishops and archbishops and priests and monks and nuns could be sent out in the world with money and art treasures to put them back in the countries that they once raped and violated, whose original systems of animism and belief and simplicity they told would tell them, take them straight to hell. They could give that money away and they could concentrate on the apparent essence of their belief. And then I would stand here and say the Catholic Church may well be a force for good in the world. But until that day, it is not. Thank you.